Music is like a dream, one that I cannot hear, said Ludwig van Beethoven. Music gives a soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination and life to everything, said Plato. If I were not a physicist, I would probably be a musician. I often think in music. I live my daydreams in music. I see my life in terms of music, said Albert Einstein. From the very beginning of life, music has played an instrumental role in bringing people closer. Music is something that is celebrated universally. And in this session, we shall read about two musicians from two very different corners of the world in the inspirational collection of short stories called The Sound of Music. The first story is about Evelyn Glini, a percussionist from Scotland who can play more than thousand instruments to perfection. And the second story is on Ustad Bismillah Khan, the Shehnai maestro and a Bharat Ratna recipient. Now, in life, disability for most becomes a hindrance in the path of success. Many break down psychologically and rarely can motivate themselves to get back. The world too never fails to discriminate them from the rest. The lifelong disabled tag leaves an everlasting impact on their minds. But Evelyn Glini was not one of them. Her story has a different tale to tell. At the age of 11, it was discovered that she had a hearing problem. But it didn't deter her from becoming a musician. She showed the world that a disability does not bring an end to one's life. It can also be the beginning for something grand. Evelyn Glini listens to Sound Without Hearing It by Deborah Cowley. Rush hour crowds jostle for position on the underground train platform. A slight girl, looking younger than her 17 years, was nervous yet excited as she felt the vibrations of the approaching train. It was her first day at the prestigious Royal Academy of Music in London and daunting enough for any teenager fresh from a Scottish farm. But this aspiring musician faced a bigger challenge than most. She was profoundly deaf. Evelyn Glini's loss of hearing had been gradual. Her mother remembers noticing something was wrong when the eight-year-old Evelyn was waiting to play the piano. They called her name and she didn't move. I suddenly realized she hadn't heard, says Isabel Glini. For quite a while, Evelyn managed to conceal her growing deafness from friends and teachers. But by the time she was 11, her marks had deteriorated and her headmistress urged her parents to take her to a specialist. It was then discovered that her hearing was severely impaired as a result of gradual nerve damage. They were advised that she should be fitted with hearing aids and sent to a school for the deaf. Everything suddenly looked black, says Evelyn. But Evelyn was not going to give up. She was determined to lead a normal life and pursue her interest in music. One day she noticed a girl playing a xylophone and decided that she wanted to play it too. Most of her teachers discouraged her, but percussionist Ron Forbes spotted her potential. He began by tuning two large drums to different notes. Don't listen through your ears, he would say. Try to sense it some other way, says Evelyn. Suddenly, I realized I could feel the higher drum from the waist up and the lower one from the waist down. Forbes repeated the exercise and soon Evelyn discovered that she could sense certain notes in different parts of her body. I had learned to open my mind and body to the sounds and vibrations. The rest was sheer determination and hard work. What an inspirational lady she is! So let's try and understand the story in detail. Now the story begins with a nervous yet excited 17-year-old girl waiting at a crowded underground platform for the train. It was her first day at the prestigious Royal Academy of Music in London. And naturally, it was an intimidating experience for her as she was a fresher straight from a Scottish farm. 
But Evelyn Glini was no ordinary girl. She was an aspiring musician who had already faced a bigger challenge than most. She was profoundly deaf. The author then describes her journey in life so far. Now, Evelyn Glini was not born deaf. Her loss of hearing was a result of gradual nerve damage. Her mother, Isabel Glini, recounts how her daughter's loss of hearing was discovered. When someone called her name, Evelyn wouldn't move. And that is when Isabel realized that Evelyn could not hear. Now, Evelyn managed to hide her condition from friends and teachers for some time. But after she turned 11, her marks began to decline. So her headmistress urged her parents to take her to a specialist. It was then that they discovered that her hearing was severely impaired. Also, the specialists advised that her parents should get her hearing aids and send her to school for the deaf. Obviously, this shook up Evelyn completely. But Evelyn was not a person who would give up easily. She was determined to lead a normal life and pursue her interest in music. And one day, when she noticed a girl playing a xylophone, she just knew that this was the instrument that she wanted to play. After facing discouragement from most teachers, her potential was spotted by the percussionist Ron Forbes. He began by tuning two large drums to different notes. He asked Evelyn to sense the music rather than hearing it through her ears. And during the course of time, she suddenly realized that she could feel the higher drum from the waist up and the lower one from the waist down. After repeating this exercise several times, Evelyn discovered that she could sense certain notes through different parts of her body. And that is how she had learned to open her mind and body to sounds and vibrations. No doubt, she is an inspiration to the differently abled. And to add to that, through her music, she has given enormous pleasure to millions. So you see, Evelyn is an inspiration for not only the differently abled, but also for anyone who has a dream. She proves that to achieve your dreams and aspirations, all you need is strong willpower and strong determination. Don't you agree with me? Now, before we move on to the next story, let's look at some significant words in this part. So the first word that we have in this part of the story is jostle which means to push, elbow or bump against someone roughly, typically in a crowd. The next word that we have is prestigious, which refers to something much respected and admired. In the story, the word refers to the Royal Academy of Music in London. Then we have the word daunting, which refers to something that makes you feel slightly frightened or worried. This word indicates that her first day at the Royal Academy of Music in London made Evelyn nervous. After that, we have the word aspiring, which refers to someone who is trying to become successful. Next on the list, we have the word profoundly, which means to a great extent. This word is used to show that Evelyn was totally deaf. The word conceal means to hide. Tutormate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.